Shalom. First off, we want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, true name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shahu, the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Rakaqa Dodge, which is the Holy Spirit that comforts and guides us, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders of great millstone, teacher, rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutations to the elect. As you may know, these internet epistles and our teachings in general is more so geared to the Lord's chosen people. The Most High God of the Bible has the chosen people, and they are the Israelites. Today, consisting of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Israelite foreigners that may look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father, Selah, traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel that's written in my bio. As for the heathen, the other 17 nations outside of the nation of Israel, the Lord doesn't give a damn about, but tuning into these videos, my videos and other video, brothers videos here at Great Millstone stomp from my apostles on down to the men that teach the same doctrine and truth and sincerity, you're going to find out what your judgment is to be according to the scriptures. But without further ado, this video is on the topic of the fact that the Lord is looking for those that are going to endure to the end. Because the end hasn't came come yet. We still have to wait for these prophecies to finish coming to pass. Before our Lord returns and crack the clouds and deliver his elect. And that's ultimately what we're hoping to be. Because, like I stated before, the Lord has a chosen people, but he also has a chosen other chosen because the majority of our people are not even going to try to endure. And some of the ones that come into this thing, they're not going to endure to the end. Because like it says in Matthew 22, since I'm here, in verse 14, it reads, Our Lord, Yahweh Shai speaking, it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. So yes, yeah, a lot of people that wake up to the fact that they're Israelites, but... Are they chosen? Do they have the 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 the, the endurance, the, the stamina to go through what we have to go through in this thing of ours to serve the Lord? Because it's not going to be an easy walk. The scriptures say enter in at the straight gate, which straight is basically talking about a path of difficulty. You can't come in this thing believing that you're going to be prosperous in this kingdom. Because this is not our kingdom. This is Satan's kingdom. And the ones that are on the bend of Satan in the flesh is the so-called white man whose forefather is Esau Edom in the scriptures. Matthew 24. And I'm going to grab verse 13. It reads, but the, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's our Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. So you have to endure unto the end, like I stated. I'm going to grab the next verse. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So that's why you see the men out there on them highways and the byways and on these internet epistles. Because ultimately, that's a commandment of the Lord for us to do. And like I said, it's not going to be an easy walk. So when you end this thing, you know, being in the flesh, you might be, t you might get tired sometimes, and sometimes you might, Satan might be trying to tempt you to make you feel as though the Lord isn't dealing with you, but. You got to have the faith to re rebuke those demons when those demons try to come into your mind. Because just like it says in Luke 22, 
in the third star in the 31st verse, the Lord told Peter that Satan desired to sift him. And that's what Satan desires to do to the elect. But the Lord isn't going to allow that to happen. Because the elect was already chosen from the foundation of the earth. The Lord knows who the chosen is, but as of right now, we don't know in general. But we got to give diligence, like it says in 2 Peter 1 and 10, to make our calling and election sure. So being occupied in these scriptures and constantly applying the scriptures through our day to day. Yeah, we may fall short sometimes, but that's what shows how that we need Yahweh Shah. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, it reads, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Because ultimately, this is not a carnal thing. Everyone has their specific measure on on their faith that the Lord has allotted to. So like I said, just because you might feel as though you don't have the same type of knowledge that the next man have, that shouldn't hinder you from serving the Lord. Because the Lord wants to see your faith Because another person cannot deliver you. Like it says in Philippians 2 and 12, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, yeah, we help out each other when we can, but. Like I said earlier, we got to enter in at the straight gate. And the straight gate isn't the same as the wide gate, which, as we know, the scriptures say, the wide gate is what leadeth to destruction. Because you don't, because in the wide gate, they don't have discipline. Like I always say, when you're on a wide gate, you have leeway to 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 stray off in this, that area, stray off in the in that area over there, as in, you know, for an example, indulging in, worshiping this false god, that false god. That includes Jesus Christ, Allah, Buddha, etc. You're able to change your sexuality. And ultimately indulge in all manner of wickedness and continue to rack up sin. And like it says in Romans 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Yahweh Shem Yahushah is eternal life. And that's what we're seeking for. Eternal life, the kingdom of heaven. Which will be far greater than the situation that we're in now because ultimately we're in hell because hell is basically a condition that you're in unlike what they teach in Christianity which we call them the anti-Christians like the apostle Taha <laughs> told us because ultimately they're not Christians supposed so-called Christians are Supposed to be followers of your followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And like the apostle stated, that to be a so called Christian, first and foremost, you got to be an Israelite. So if you don't know that you're an Israelite, or you don't believe that you're an Israelite, then how could you consider yourself to be a follower of 
Yahweh Shemuel Shai, when the scriptures clearly say that Yahweh Shai sprung out from the tribe of Judah. And throughout the scriptures, it talks about how the Israelites are the apple of the Lord's eye. But back to the straight gate. I'm going to go to Second Edges chapter 7. And I'm going to start at verse 6. It reads, there's also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field. And it's full of all good things. And that's the kingdom of heaven. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous path, place to fall. Like as if there was were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. So that's just hammering on the point that the scriptures say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, we can help give each other, you know, a little push, but on the straight gate, we can't be lollygagging and playing around. We got to continue to stay focused. And that's in the household of faith that's seeking the, the kingdom to come, the kingdom to come. We praying that the Lord hasten the day. So we're not trying to take our time while, of course, we got to, you know, be mindful on how we serve the Lord. Basically, do it in truth and sincerity and, and ultimately strive lawfully. But we still want to continue to keep moving. Like the scriptures say, you got to keep your hand on the plow. You take your head off of the plow like the Lord said that then ultimately you're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Verse 9, it says, If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive the inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so shall Israel portion, portion, because for their sake I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. So you got to understand that when you come into this truth, your life is on the line. But you're putting your life on the line ultimately to receive a great reward. And putting your life on the line is ultimately pleasing in the sight of the Lord because it shows that you have faith and it shows that you're doing what the Lord commanded you to do. Because the Lord isn't going to defend those of our people that's not doing what he commanded them to do. Because how could you expect somebody to want to defend you when you're bucking up against the words that the Lord speak? When you doing your own thing, leaning unto your own understanding, which ultimately is showing your lack of faith. Romans 12, and I'm going to start at the top. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So we're supposed to be presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice for the Lord. And that involves us serving the Lord to the best that we can do. In truth and sincerity. Denying ourselves of certain things that we indulged in before finding out this truth. Like the scriptures say in Isaiah 55, and I believe verse 7, it says, Let the wicked 
forsake his wicked ways, roughly paraphrasing. We were once Gentiles, like the scriptures say. But coming into this truth, like it speaks on in verse 2, Romans 12, 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the that the what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha? So we're supposed to be being renewed in the mind, putting off the old man, not being conformed to this world, because ultimately this world wants to guide you in a direction that's pushing you away from Yahweh Hashem Yahusha. And ultimately, that's going to lead you to destruction. And that's the problem with certain people that come into this truth. And they get it entangled with the cares of this world. And they end up falling out to the point, like the beginning of this lesson, is talking about they don't endure to the end. Because they fall in love with what the wickedness and the pollutions that they were indulging in before finding out this knowledge and they feel as though that is not worth it or they basically lose the faith which leads them into the being in the position of the ones one of the ones that was called but wasn't chosen and that's why we got to continuously pray that the Lord keep the spirit on us to endure to the end because there was many people that came into this truth that you would have thought was going to endure. But they obviously didn't understand that the Lord sees what a person does in secret. Because that's why you got to understand that this is a spiritual thing. Because a per we can sit and, and, and look at a person at face value and believe that they're a man of the Lord or a woman of the Lord. But we don't know what they do when they're not around us. Like I told somebody today that ultimately I fear the Lord. Because I said most people only believe in what they can see. They only fear the eyes of man. Actually, I was talking, quoting the scriptures. Um, what's that? Ecclesiasticus. Or Sirach chapter 23 and verse 19, it says, Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. So you got to understand that the Lord is always watching. So the Lord sees if you're trying and if you're being diligent to the best of your ability according to your measure but if he sees that you're not trying or fighting to endure to the end then ultimately he's going to take that Holy Spirit away from you just like the time of King Saul when the Holy Spirit was taken away from him and he felt it but like I said the point of this lesson is that the Lord is looking for the ones that's going. To, the 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 Lord is looking for the ones that's going to endure until the end. Not those that's going to endure for a short while and treat this thing as if it's a if it's just a a trend or a fad that fades away. Because this is this is basically our heritage. And while we're in this polluted and wicked kingdom, we got to continue to pray and spiritually fight against these demons that try to come up against us, including the ones that try to hop on us, hop on our close relatives, loved ones, etc. They try to steer us off the path of enduring to the end of this race that we're in, this spiritual race that we're in. 
But Lord willing, that was edifying. Shalom.